7.30. Announcement is made that adequate notice of this meeting has been given and that it is being conducted in accordance with NJSA 10 colon 4-6 at SEC of the New Jersey Open Public Meetings Act. Nora, would you call the roll, please? Mr. Didich. Here. Councilman DiPiero. Here. <laughs> Mr. Mealy. Here. Mr. Matt. Present. Mr. Napolitano. Here. Ms. Vealy. Here. Mr. Von Aiken. Here. Chairman Dinsmore. Here. We also have with us our board planner, Mr. Weiser, our board engineer, Mr. Cangiano, and our board attorney, Mr. Lagana. Very good. Let's all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. That's right. This meeting of the Township of Persephone Troy Hills Planning Board. Monday, March 7th, 2022. It is 7.30 p.m. Uh, if we could also note that this meeting is open to the general public. Is there anyone here who has something they wish to bring to this board that is not on our agenda tonight? Hearing and seeing none. Uh, we'll move on to the resolutions. We have uh, the resolution for application number 21 colon 517 onyx equities to Hilton Court block 202 lot 310 preliminary and final major site plan uh, and a uh, major soil moving permit to construct a warehouse facility do I have a motion for that resolution mr. chairman I move the motion to approve application number 21 colon 517 Onyx Equities, 2 Hilton Court, Block 202, Lot 3.10, Preliminary and Final Major Site Plan, Major Soil Moving Permit to Construct a Warehouse Facility. Do I hear a second? Second. Paul Tano. Uh, Nora, would you call the roll, please? DiPiero. Yes. Matt. Yes. DiPolitano. Yes. Vealy. Yes. Dinsmore. Yes. Tano. The department's here to give a report. It's not all on agenda, though. Mr. Walker, the war department. Okay. But yes. that actually, isn't that the Eileen Court? Is it? Yeah. Yeah. It's the. Uh, it's the Eileen Court application oh. for Monaco. Yep. Oh. Okay. I'm sorry. I didn't realize that. Yep. Okay. Um. We actually have a second resolution at this point. Um. That. We that resolution is this applicant okay. asked if we would uh, be able to adopt it this same evening that we're hearing it. So, right. So, we don't want to hear the application. Okay, that's true. Very good. So, let's go through the, the list. We've got uh, application number 22, colon 501, Township of Persephone, 6070 Eileen Court. Block 498, Lot 23. Courtesy review. Good evening, Lord. I'm John We work a Board of Superintendent of Town of Parsippany. Sir, before you provide a testimony, I'm going to swear you in. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God? Yes, I do. Please state your name again and your position. My name is John Weworka. I'm the water superintendent for the town of Parsippany. Can you spell your last name again? W I E W O R K A. Thank you, sir. I'm here tonight to talk about our Bale Road tank uh, painting project. It's also known as the Eileen Court tank. It is at the dead end of Eileen Court, it's a half a million gallon tank. It needs to be painted. It needs to be painted inside and out. On this tank, we have two cell carriers, AT&T and Verizon. In order for us to paint the structure, we need to get them off the tank and onto a temporary monopole, which would be located directly adjacent to the tank. The carriers need to get their equipment onto the monopole, make improvements to the 
tank structure itself before we paint it. Uh, they have to put up their future uh, supports. Once they do that, we're free to paint the tank. That's just to give you an idea of the operation that we need to achieve. The monopole is temporary. It's 100 foot tall. Uh, we need to begin this work as soon as the weather permits, and we're almost there. Um, there's a lot that has to be done that's going to take a couple weeks with the carriers, just transferring their equipment off our tank, on building the monopole, getting on the monopole, tearing down their equipment that's on the tank. We need to paint this tank in uh, fair weather. Uh, we generally plan on painting between the months of August and November. That's our window of opportunity to get the job done. Um, we can't take the tank out of service during the hot summer months. We, we need the water. Uh, and obvious, for obvious reasons, we can't take it out of service in the colder months, uh, just because the coatings will not adhere to the structure itself. Um, I think the planner or the engineer did ask about uh, testimony about the site operations. Uh, obviously, we're going to be moving a large monopole in. Um, that will be erected uh, adjacent, immediately adjacent to our structure. And um, if you need to, the how uh, the structure will be erected, I do have our general contractor here, Eric Schimmel, who can give uh, information if you guys are interested in the how it goes up part of this. Uh, but it goes up relatively quick. Uh, it is ballast mounted, meaning it's got large concrete blocks that hold it down and keep it from falling over. Uh, it's mounted on the surface of the gravel parking lot that's already there. Um, so they're going to have their operation with their folks erecting this tower, transferring their equipment. And then we come in at the end once they're all off our tank and we do our paint operation, which is completely different from what they're doing. Um, this will be occurring during working hours, Monday through Friday. And um, the hours generally are between 7.30 and 5 p.m. And is there, uh, vehicle traffic is unpredictable because the the parking lot there is shared by both us and the Little League facility. Um, we, we will try to minimize our impact to them. We will try to keep to the far side uh, with our tank painting activities. The monopole does have to go adjacent to their structures that are already there. Um, it, will, it will not take up any additional parking. Um, it, it will block a temporary access road that does have a loop so they still can access the fields with a vehicle if they have to. It's just not going to loop around like it does now. We did this back, uh, I believe the year was 2006, somewhere in that time frame. We've done this before. This is one of two others that will be coming before you with a very similar requirement where we have to get cell carriers off on a temporary structure paint our tank and let them go back and remove the temporary structure. Uh, question? Could you have... How, how long will it take to construct the monopole? I'm just thinking about the Little League season is about to open, too. Okay. Uh, Eric, can you come up a yeah. second? Um, perhaps, Mr. Chairman, before we get into the testimony about the construction of the monopole, if there's any board members who has any questions regarding the testimony already given. Which is the basic operation. Actually, one simple question. I'm assuming that once you finish painting the tank, that they're going to take down the monopole and go back up on the tank. That is correct. Okay. We will restore the site back to the way it was or better. What is your estimated time of return to the tank well we hope to have our tank painting done by mid-november that's our goal um from there to take down uh eric you you would have to give i uh, information on yeah. that if you guys finish in november you, hang on one second i'm just going to swear you in. Oh, okay. please raise your right hand 
do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Name uh, for the record, please. Eric Schimmel. Spell your last. S-C-H-I-M-M-E-L. In your position. Uh, project manager for special projects. Would you please speak into the mic? Project manager for special projects. And you're overseeing the construction of this monopole? Yes. Okay. All right, and, and with regard to the, the discussion here before, the one thing I'm observing is in your material, uh, the monopole will be completely within an already existing fence, right? No, that's not correct. That fence will be a temporary fence placed around the monopole and removed when we're done. Okay, is this any of this going on the land lease to the Little League? Um, it's part of the parking lot immediately adjacent to the tank. Have they been notified? I have spoken to both Joe Plesha and uh, one of the personnel, I forget the name, but uh, we did speak in the fall and we did notify him that this project was forthcoming. Okay, I mean, if, if most of the work is done in the summer and fall, it, then it's not going to be an issue because they don't use the fields that much. Certainly right. What, what's, what's going to happen is the temporary monopole will have to go up this re as soon as possible. Uh, as soon as they can obtain their permits, I be believe they're going to begin work immediately, putting the pole up. Once the pole's up, the space that it takes up is rather small. Okay. I mean, I walk there a couple of times a week, mm -hmm. so I know the loop, I know the parking lot, and I'm just... Is that is that access loop going to be completely uh, taken up by this monopole? Yes, it will with be. The temporary it will temporarily be taken up for the duration of this project. Okay. We have no other choice of where we can put this. Fair enough. Fair enough. Other members of the board? I guess one question. So you, you plan to do the um, painting starting in August? Yes. Right. When would you look? When would the monopole go up? Uh, I, I I would love to have it go up tomorrow if I could, uh, but as soon as possible, as soon as permits can be obtained, because uh, they have a an awful lot of work to do in order for us to stay on schedule with our. So there's work. no way that it's going to be able to not interfere with baseball. Got it. All right. Mr. Von Aachen, you had. Uh... Uh, well, I, I'm just a little concerned. It sounds like you had an informal conversation to notify the Little League. I, I think an, an appropriate step would be to provide some sort of formal letter to the Little League office so that they're properly informed. We could do that. Okay. And Jim Walsh is aware of all the projects that are going on there, so they already know. Okay. I, I will send the letter out. Other members of the board have any questions of this? I have one. Yes. Sorry, Mr. Is, the, uh, is this pole in one piece? No. Oh, it comes in multiple pieces? Yeah, it comes okay. in multiple pieces. Uh, it'll come on three tractor trailers. Uh, we'll have a crane there the day it shows up. Prior to that, we'll prep the ground. We'll put in eight inches of stone where this will be set on. And then we'll come in with the tractor trailers, uh, the crane. We'll put the base together. We'll put the ballast on top of the base. And then uh, we'll stack the pole. That process, the stone will be the first day. The process of putting the whole pole up with the crane and uh, the tractor trailers coming in, that'll take one day. And then it'll probably take uh, two or three weeks. We'll be there with a man lift, putting the carrier antennas and mounts and lines, uh, running up the pole. and getting everything tested, and then cutting them from the tank over to the temporary pole. Once that's complete, then we'll start taking all their assets off the tank. Uh, and then there's repair work that we have to do once that is done prior to the painting, so that the, all the welds will be painted with the uh, coating system and not fail the coating system later on down the road. And then, and, uh, sorry, one more. Um, is the safety of the children in Northdale School going to be affected by this at all? Crane, uh, crane I, losing a piece, rolling into the school building, outdoor recess, and like that at all we have to worry about? No, I'm pretty sure we're out of it. We're going to be out of the following, if anything, by the school. 
Well, you said the pole's going up as soon as possible. That could be during school hours, though, right? Yes, but the fall range, of the fall will be 100 feet. Uh, the kids, there's no, there's no place for the kids to be around within 100 feet, and we will have... I'm just thinking... We will have... Uh, that, that, that's up on the hill, though, that, that parking yeah. lot. And yeah. the North Hill is down the bottom of the hill, if mm -hmm. I'm not mistaken, right? Okay. Yeah. Um, so hoping nothing goes down the hill. It, it's behind stuff. some trees and, yeah. okay. and stuff okay. like that, so I'm not so concerned. That area is subject, however, that right now they've been staging uh, the road work uh, that they've been doing. They've got a lot of heavy earth moving equipment in there and uh, some backhoes. And up in the parking lot? Up in the parking lot, yeah. Uh, I, I don't think it would interfere with your uh, moving in because they're on the uh, the side closest to the school, the entrance to the parking lot, and there should be room to move in and do what you need to do. But yeah, it'll just be one day with the tractor trailers and the crane and the man lifts all in there at once, and then after that, it'll just be the man lift and uh, our crews working. You know, it'll be the one day that's a major operation. Okay. Same thing on the other end uh, when we take it down. We're coming back in with the same tractor trailer and crane and man lift to take the pole down. Uh, as far as the rest of it, we'll be there with a the man lift. Could you please speak into the microphone? At the end, we'll be there with a the man lift at the end. Sorry. We'll be there with the man lift at the end again to take the tower down. But prior to that, we'll have to install all the carrier's new equipment after the tank is painted. Sure. Which will take, uh, it'll take a little while because we got to take extra care not to damage the, the new coding system and mm -hmm. we'll get in trouble <laughs> uh so it'll take a little while to get everything back on the tank um and then after that they're up and running on the tank then we'll come in and, and this will be monday through friday not saturday and sunday which is right the busiest days for the little no, we will we'll be there monday to friday and uh over the weekend we'll secure the site so Okay, because that parking lot is very heavily used, and the little league is in and out. So just be aware. Yeah, well, we'll we'll make sure that the site's secure once once the tower is up. We'll have a temporary fence around it, uh, and we'll keep it secure. Okay. Any other questions by members of the board uh, from our planner? Do you have any? Uh, just a couple of quick questions. Um, So we own, the township owns the water tower and the land around it? I, I believe it's the township property. Um, it, it's all one big property. Okay, so there would be no reason to get an, a separate owner's signed consent no. for use of the Not property? Not that I'm aware of. Charles. Okay. We have, we have a right of way for the, where the water tank is, and I, I forget what the periphery is, maybe another 20 or 30 feet around the water tower is part of the right of way. Okay. Thank you. Um, bear with me a second. So you will be expanding the square footage of the site because you're expanding the fence line for this. Yeah, yes, th this will take up additional space. <laughs> It'll take the footprint of the ballast foundation. We are not expanding the fence that's currently around the tank. That fence will remain in place after this tank is painted. It may have to temporarily come down during the painting operation, but it will be put back up. The fence that uh, Mr. Schimmel is referring to is a temporary fence that will just surround the temporary monopole. And that is gone roughly in the, what did I write down, the, by the end of the year? Yes, yes. It, it, it'll be in cold weather when that starts coming down. So at the end of the day, the site will look exactly the way it is now, albeit the water tank's going to have a fresh coat of paint. It's going to look like a nice, shiny new paint tank out there. I'll be blinded. Okay, <laughs> that's, that's all I have. Thank all right. you. Andrew, do you have any? No, uh, they answered my questions in his testimony, so I'm good. 
All right. Any other items that need to be? Do you have anything more you wish to say? I just want to add a board that th we have several tanks that have cell carriers on them, and they will be coming forward probably next year. Two more will be almost an identical type of operation, just in a different location. Mm -hmm. um, there are million gallon storage tanks that we desperately need painted. We do have to coordinate it with multiple carriers. Uh, so it gets a little tricky when there's a lot of them involved. But we, we do have a, two more projects very similar to this one. Okay. Very good. Very good. Mr. Chairman. I have a question here. Yes, to um, And again, it may be just for my knowledge, but uh, what is the risk of any contamination inside the tank due to the paint? Any chemical contamination? No, I, the, the tank is drained when we do this work. The, the, these paint coatings are all NSF uh, certified coatings that are compatible with drinking water. There, there is no risk from the painting operation. The tank is completely dry. Uh, there's no water in it. We do valve it off from the system. Uh, before we put it back in the system, we have to do a series of tests, okay. including bacteriological testing, before we can put it back in service. Okay. Thank you so much. Counselor, you have a question? I have one question. Um, are you aware of the height of the existing uh, utilities from the carriers? current height um, I there no I don't know the exact number they're not on top of the tank they are uh, right at the bowl level of the tank they're where the, off the side. okay so the, the reason why I ask is that typically if they are a part of approval from either this board or some other board uh, that height is very specific so I would just add that the measurements be taken prior to removal so that way when they get put back onto the tank, they're at that same height because this height has is probably specified someplace. They uh, were courtesy reviews. So all they were exempt from zoning. Oh, okay. So right. back in the day, they didn't apply to boards. They just got their zoning and building permits. It's something new that I do that I bring applicants for courtesy reviews to the board. In the old days, it was town property. We just did the work. We just did it. Okay. Yeah, just to note that for the record. Thank you. Carriers, drawings. Um, that they have from the original because they're very specific on their heights right for their they have to have the angles of deflection and everything adjusted according to the height so uh, on their drawing they will have the rad center which would be the center of the antenna which they'll have now which will be the Speaking exact to the same microphone, please. which will be the exact same when we put them back on the tank so you'll be able you'll have the measurements as they currently exist and then you'll have the measurements when they go back up. Yeah, they there are drawings that exist now that show the elevation of the antennas right now. So Perfect. they're gonna go back in the exact same positions they thank you. Are at I now. Right okay. Any further questions by members of the board, our professionals? Any questions by members of the public on these matters? Not this by these uh, Hearing and seeing none, is there anybody in the public that wishes to speak either in favor or in opposition to this uh, application at this time? Hearing and seeing none. Uh, do I hear somebody willing to make a motion on this? That uh, we've uh, uh, received the courtesy review and that we feel that it complies with our zoning? Mr. Chairman, I'll make that motion. I guess I'll just need some clarification about whether this isn't an approval, obviously, because this is a courtesy review. Right. This is just a, an endorsement, shall we say? A, a board finding. Board finding? That, that Got it. it. It's consistent so, with our zoning. So I make a motion that, I'm sorry. The sorry, only board. recommendation that I heard was that the Little League be formally noticed. Yes. If there's anything else. That, that was the only recommendation that I heard by the board. Other than that, it would be a consistent with the master plan um, analysis. Okay, so if I make the motion uh, subject to the one recommendation that we notify Little League formally uh, of the timing and the schedule. Um, Matt, for the record, if you need it. Do I have a second? I second that. Nora, would you call the roll, please? Did each? Yes. DiPiero? Yes. Mealy? Yes. Matt? 
Yes. Napolitano? Yes. Dealey? Yes. Von Aiken? Yes. Dinsmore? Yes. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good luck. I walk under there. I'll be enjoying watching you work. <laughs> All right. Moving on to our next item on our agenda. It's application number 21, colon 524, Enton Road, LLC, 9 Enton Road, for preliminary and final major site plan for construction of solar carports. Mr. Chairman, my name is Bob Smith. I'm a licensed attorney in the state of New Jersey, and I'm here tonight uh, representing 9 Enton Road, LLC. And as you accurately described it, we're here to put solar panels on a portion of our parking lot uh, and use the benefits of solar electricity at our facility. Uh, the site in question is 13.15 acres. Uh, it's in the SED-5 zoning, and um, it already has uh, an office structure on the facility. Uh, I don't think I have to talk to the board about the benefits of solar. The world's getting a little too hot. Solar energy is one of the ways that we can hopefully uh, reduce our need for fossil fuels. And the uh, state of New Jersey has... Uh, by law declared uh, solar uses as inherently beneficial uses because of the benefits to society as a whole. My intention tonight, Mr. Chairman, to uh, have only one witness, and what we are seeking, just for clarification, is a preliminary and final site plan. There are no variances requested. So it's All right. Before, before we get there, we have a bunch of waivers mentioned in the... Uh, uh, the uh, planner's memo of December 3rd, 2021. Uh, Mr. Weiser, would you... Uh... Yes, Mr. Chairman, I've been trying to bring this up on my uh, computer. I can't seem to do that. So, thank you very much. This is... Um, it's embarrassing is what it is. But in any event, uh, this is the um, BFJ report dated December 3rd from Susan Favate, and I'm just going to go through uh, the items that she has on the uh, second half of page one and the top half of page two. Um, so the first is that uh, the item is the NJDEP letter of interpretation. There appears to be wetlands along the southern and western periphery of the property, but none of the improvements are proposed in those wetlands, so a waiver is recommended. Uh, there is a requirement that protective covenants and deed restrictions be uh, submitted. The applicant is asked to confirm that no such resistance, uh, no such restrictions, pardon me, exists, mm -hmm. and that would be a testimony item. Uh, the project is exempt from the Highlands, so a waiver is recommended. In terms of natural features the site is developed and improvements are only proposed on the paved areas so a waiver is recommended spot elevations requirement there are no new buildings or changes to existing buildings so a waiver is recommended floor plans again there are no changes to the buildings so a waiver is recommended signs um sir can you confirm that there are no sign signage there, proposed there are no signs proposed so a waiver is recommended thank you Fences, walls, and sidewalks, again, no changes, so a waiver is recommended. Utilities, again, no changes, so a waiver is recommended. Top of the next page, <clears throat> pardon me. Storm drainage, no changes, waiver recommended. Um, I do note, however, that I think on the engineer's report, there was uh, a request for a discussion on downspouts and how you're going to deal with water coming off of the um, the proposed structures, so uh, I would imagine you'll deal with that as part of testimony. Uh, landscaping, no landscaping is proposed, so a waiver is recommended. Soil er erosion and sediment control, no grade changes are proposed, waiver recommended. Solid waste, no waste receptacles are proposed, waiver recommended. Use of non-resident 
use of non-residential buildings. No changes to the principal uses are proposed. Waiver is recommended. Traffic study, no change to the traffic pattern is proposed. Waiver is recommended. Environmental impact assessment. Uh, again, we're on existing uh, impervious, so and it's not within the uh, adjacent natural features, so waiver is recommended. Tree protection and tree removal, no tree removal is proposed, waiver is recommended. And conformance with preliminary approval uh, and providing separate sheets for final approval, this is a combined application, so there is no separate preliminary and final approval, so a waiver is recommended. All right. Yes, Mr. Van Aken. Um Regarding the utility item here, uh, considering that these are solar panels, my understanding is approvals are needed from the utility company. Is that something that maybe should have been presented rather than be a waiver? Just the question for I think it's probably more of an engineering Okay. I, I don't see that. that that's that would be between the utility company and the requirements for the solar pit pan. I don't think that's anything that it would have. Okay, yeah. fair enough. Jennifer? Um, also, I noticed the accessory height variance is missing. Um, remember the last solar panel? Uh, yeah. It, it's higher than 15 feet, so that's the one variance that just isn't in the report. Okay. Well, that, I think we found that out. <laughs> Last time. Last time, yes. Um, so I'm assuming that that would be your your application is amended for to have uh, a request the variance for the uh, conditional uh, auxiliary. Yeah, the top is 20 feet, give or take. On the right. Yeah, 21 feet. Just yeah. do stuff with it. Well, we'll get you sworn. Yeah. Yep. But uh, I'm, I'm assuming your application is amended to include that. And also to magic language into the notice with regard to any other yes. variants or waivers uh, which may be required. Uh, and quite frankly, that was not something we, you know, that's, uh, okay. uh, was identified. So we're requesting it and we'll justify it. Do I hear a motion uh, approving or granting the waivers as outlined? both in the discussion of the uh, in the memo of December 3rd and any subsequent uh, requirements. Mr. Chairman, a motion to approve the waivers recommended by our planner, Mr. Weiser. Do I hear a second? Second, Von Aiken. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none. Uh, I'm assuming you've also seen the proposed uh, uh, final uh, resolution at this point. Uh, yes, and uh, we're bringing new technology tonight to planning and zoning. The good-looking guy in the white shirt at the back of the room is an associate in my office, and he has a portable printer. <laughs> And if the board decides, if you decide that you want to approve this resolution, that there may be a sentence you don't like and you'd like it to replace with something else, he can do it on the spot. So, God willing, there's not a, many issues. We worked hard to put this resolution together. The reason being, being that building season's coming up. We're trying to get the solar in the ground as quickly as we can. I'm, I'm assuming that you and our township oh. uh, planning counselor have uh, worked together Many, on, yes uh, making sure that it meets what you're looking for and then we will look at it and decide if that's what we're if willing it's acceptable to you to and if you want to make any changes we can do it wow cool so uh that's probably the reason i can't get on the email <laughs> is it blocking you? <laughs> it's blocking. Counselor, present, please present your case all right we have we, we're going to be right to the point. We have one witness, uh, and that witness is seated to my right. His name is Drake Stinson, and he's our engineer. I'd ask that he be sworn so he can give testimony, and then we'll do his credentials, etc. 
Mr. Stinson, please raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you God? Yes, I do. Name and address for the record, please. Please spell your life. Christopher Stinson. Um, my address is 223 Wilkie Road, Tannersville, Pennsylvania. I work for uh, New Lines Engineering and Survey of 315 Monmouth Avenue, Lakewood, New Jersey. Spell your last name. S-T-I-N-S-O-N. Stinson. Counselor, you can qualify the witness, please. All right, if you would, uh, Mr. Stinson, uh, would you give the board a uh, detailed summary of your credentials? Right, thank you. I received a Bachelor's in Science and Civil Engineering in 1985 from New Jersey Institute of Technology. I became a New Jersey professional engineer in 1992. I obtained professional license in New York and in Pennsylvania. I'm a Green Council Building Lead Professional. I'm a certified municipal engineer and I've been designing site improvements uh, in civil engineering for over 35 years. And I've also testified in front of numerous boards. We offer you to him, Mr. Chairman, as a, or to you, Mr. Chairman, as a Pete licensed PE in our state. Any members have uh, any questions? Hearing and seeing none. So if you would, uh, Mr. Stinson, how about giving us a, a summary of what uh, our proposal is to the board? And then we'll start going into some of what, what we did. I, I don't know whether you think this is a good idea or not, but what we did, you previously approved a solar carport at the very next property at 7 Enton. So what we did, being the smart lawyers that we think we are, we went back and we read the transcript and watched the meeting. We saw all the questions that you asked. So we made a point of telling Mr. Stinson to be ready to answer those questions. So, Mr. Stinson, first, give us the broad overview, and then let's talk about some of the individual features. Mr. Chairman, can I ask a question? Absolutely. Did, didn't the resolution say that all the testimony was given by Mr. Lines? I don't think so. But in the draft resolution? But if it is, draft resolution. we can Oh, wait. There were, I know there was revisions today that I didn't get a chance to. No, no. The original was Mr. Stinson all along. It was Mr. Stinson all along. Okay, sir. The record, our drawings are signed by um, Mr. Lines. Who's the head of our firm? Yeah, we have several fine. engineers to testify on behalf. No, I just looked at the clear resolution first, and I thought it said Mr. Lyons because I thought it was the same as signing the plan. So we have a tripod here that would make it easier. Yeah, I can. I brought my tripod. Is there a place where you like to see the middle? Yeah. Yeah. Usually right over, over there. Uh, of course, the, the stenographer might not appreciate the uh, location. You could. You, I suppose you could put it over there this time. And the people on this side of the, the board will be happier because they always Absolutely. have a long distance <laughs> to view. But we usually like to put it where our engineer can see it easily. The drawings will be exactly the same as the drawings that were submitted in the uh, board's packet. Yep. Did our tripod disappear? Uh, yeah, it's not here. You should say smash in the chairs. Oh, yeah? All right, so okay. Everybody hear me all right? Yeah. This is the plan that shows the existing conditions of the site which is known as 9 Enton Road, it's block 202, lot 9. It contains 13.155 acres. There's an existing three-story triangular-shaped office building there. And um, I visited the site on January 27th. And in my opinion, the site is in very good condition. We also, uh, we also visited the um, <coughs> solar arrays that are next door that were installed. And, and they're looking good too. So the proposed condition is going to be the other side of this one. So we propose to put 
one solar array on this side. You got. You should be using the microphone. I'm sorry. Portable. Oh, yeah, I, I can't hear you. I, is, is this on? on? It's on. You have to speak it's into on. it. Okay. It's wireless. You. you have to hold it close to your face. Right. There'll be one solar array to the east of the building. Look this. Look. Which would be on this side. And, two, and three solar arrays on this side. So we'll show you that here. This is a blow up of the position. I highlighted them in yellow. So we have one solar array on the on that side and three on this side. It'll be a total of 300. And 569 solar panels. As you can see, Enton Road, Enton Road is on this side of the building. So in my opinion, the building itself so, um, screens the um, location of the arrays so that it's not visible, as visible from Enton Road. I want to point that out. So I'll, I'll discuss the um, utilities and the engineering for the project. The electrical connections, um, it's amazing that these solar arrays I'm hoping to provide almost 100% of the electric needs, Thank you. which is phenomenal. So the extra power supplied to the electric grid in times of surplus should closely balance the electric needs for the grid um, and near zero energy cost. The system will be connected to electric service switch gear MDP in the center of the building, and there's an entrance here. The first will be electric conduits between the unit, between the arrays. Electric conduits will be a two and a half inch thick, or eighty PVC and a depth of about three feet. Uh, regarding the storm drainage, the panels themselves are set up with gaps between them, so that the water runs down between the gaps. And there's no, um, no really adverse impacts. So there's no there's no change to the stormwater system, so the water that falls through the gaps in the arrays goes onto the ground, and it's it's conveyed away just like it normally would as if they weren't there. So there's no effect of the storm drainage. Uh, the project is not considered a major project in part of the uh, NGDEP rules because it doesn't disturb whether the water is impervious. Regarding the lighting, the canopies themselves will have LED lights located underneath the, uh, the canopies that um, will make up for the blocking of the lights and the area lights on the site um, will be fine and sufficient. Uh, we did the lighting plan to show the lighting levels in between. Which one was that in the room? Here, so there's really plenty of light with the LED lights that we're going to install. Uh, the new LED lights will be closer down, in my opinion, to provide additional security in the front areas, and it's more environmentally friendly because it's a lower down, less higher up light, in my opinion. We were asked to look at whether or not the Soil Conservation District uh, permit would be required for um, soil erosion control plan certification, which requires uh, a permit if it's greater than 5,000 square feet. I prepared a calculation based on the uh, estimated trench lengths and the uh, the poles for the, um, the foundations and came up with about 2,100 square feet, which is less than the 5,000, so we do not need a uh, soil erosion control permit. Uh, we did receive some correspondence from some of the uh, authorities having jurisdiction that I'd like to talk about. Um, there were some few comments, and I can address those, those comments. The um, Persephone Troy Hills Sewer Utility prepared a memorandum dated November 8, 2021. They had no comments. Two, we received correspondence from the Persephone Troy Hills Fire Association District 6, and there were a couple comments. One, where will the power shutoff be located? Um, the power shutoff will be located where it enters the building, right about there. And we have another. There's another drawing that shows the electric. I'm not sure whether this was 
submitted with the package or not, but this shows the electric layout. Well, in case you're not sure, let's mark it A1 in tonight's date. We can make this work. Council, what are we going to call that? A1. Uh, what do you want to title the actual? It's called A1. the array layout. It's an engineering drawing E3, and it has a date of 6 6 21. The fire chief's uh, comment where, where the shutoff is located, we have a, a shutoff located right in the building where it's the building. You know what the label would look like? Uh, we just said that they'd be assigned close to the two solar array versions. The uh, fire chief said, What will the labeling look like? An identification placard will be posted indicating solar array emergency, emergency disconnect at the location of the building that I showed right there. Uh, there was another comment. During construction, keep dumpsters at least 15 feet away from the building at all times and keep roads open for emergency access. Um, we're going to add a note to that drawing and um, I'm going to say that specifically. And we will, we will follow up with the fire chief and make sure that he has this information. We will be labeling these. Or, um, <coughs> the comments from the uh, board, the planning board engineer, um, the topographic boundary survey information should be referenced on the existing conditions plan sheet 2 of 5. We agree with this comment. We'll add the reference to the drawing. Number two, the applicant shall testify regarding the construction methods and should verify that less than one acre of disturbance is proposed. Limit of disturbance for foundations and anticipated locations for electric equipment and trenching. I described that already. Um, the disturbance is less than an acre of total disturbance and less than a quarter acre impervious. The array post foundations would likely be drilled or augured for clean excavation. The trenches would be one backhoe bucket width or maybe a ditch which This cuts a narrow cut slot through like a saw blade into the, with, into the asphalt with little disturbance. Number three, a Morris County Soil Conservation District certification is required for land disturbance more than 5,000 square feet. The applicant should testify as to the amount of proposed land disturbance. Um, as I previously testified, um, it's about 2,100 square feet of disturbance, which is less than the 5,000. The disturbance will be very minimal. The cleaning board planners comments. There's just one comment. Um, well, regarding the completeness items, we were asked to testify whether there were any um, restricted covenants for the property, and that was shown on the first exhibit. One that was submitted. Correct. This is um, the existing conditions plan. There are easements up in this corner. There's an access easement and a utility easement. You can see you're cross-hatched on the drawing. But as you can see, that is not in any of the vicinity for where our solar arrays are, so there's no conflict with any of the constraints on site. So if you don't mind, let me uh, stop you for a second. On the GPI report, December 20th, you did handle the engineering comments in 1, 2, and 3, but in the second page, was 4 and 5. All right, so maybe we should take a look at those and address them. Uh, this is the... GPI report dated December 20th. And you did, the, yeah, you did the first three. And I, I may be helpful. Number four is the applicant should testify if they have shown the proposed improvements to the local fire department. If so, does the local fire department have any comments regarding the 14 foot canopy roof clearance height? Thank you. Yes, yeah, so number four. Um, I can testify that we did reach out to the, uh, the fire department as you requested. And he said 14 feet is uh, plenty of room for their equipment to fit underneath the game. Okay, so then the number five, the applicant should testify. If any modification is proposed to existing drainage patterns, the applicant should provide testimony regarding proposed canopy roof stormwater management measures, including 
Cutters Leader Discharge Locations and Snow Melt, and uh, also testified uh, regarding the note on the plan that states slope to ground. Correct. Well, as I mentioned before, there will be no changes to the stormwater and conveyance system on site. There will be no increased runoff. And that answer will ask part of that question, what does slope to ground mean? That was just an indication that the, uh, the rays themselves are pitched. And it's going to slope, slope to the ground. But as I said before, the, the water drains through the slots between the panels. And I think that's all four of the reports, correct? Well, the other um, the waiver items in the beginning, I testified as to right. the uh, protective covenant. Uh, was there anything else that you needed to? On the BFJ planning report dated December 3rd, uh, you appeared to, de to uh, address uh, all the the um, comments, but uh, our planner planner is here. We missed anything. Um, well, uh, there is the last comment on the BFJ report, which speaks to <clears throat> pardon me, speaks to some apparent discrepancies that she uh, found on the um, zoning chart. So we would ask that any uh, plan revisions be corrected. Be corrected, and then the other um, issue is what is the maximum height at the top end of the yes. highest? Correct. Yes, that's shown on the, uh, the section that shows the array itself as you mentioned. There's two different types: the seven frame, seven high T frame section, and the six high T frame section. And they have different heights. The highest one would be 22 foot three inches. Total height from grade. Correct. 22 foot three inches. And Jennifer, I'm not able to pull up the ordinance here. Do you know what the height is in the SED five? And well, in the SED five, it doesn't have a section for accessory. Accessory mm -hmm. heights is in section 430. 13B1. 13B1. And I have that on. Apologies. I would like to add to the record um, the last comment from the uh, from the planner regarding that zoning zoning information that you um, pointed out. Um, we've identified that there's only the one waiver required for the accessory structure height. All the other um, components of the project are fully compliant. Waiver or variance? Variance. Yeah. Variance. Variance. So, and in terms of that, the, if the board was looking to the balancing test, the big plus here for the municipality as well as the applicant is more solar. You know, you every time you rely on another kilowatt hour of solar, that's one less you need in your out of your grid. And hopefully, less oil that's burned or natural gas that's burned. So it's a balancing, correct? And you believe that the solar provision provides the balance that's necessary. It's amazing that this ought to be able to supply all the electricity for the building. I find it phenomenal. There's so many beneficial uses. It reduces the carbon footprint, reduces energy costs. Um, it will be beneficial to both the applicant and the town. Actually, I'd like a comment on how, while the solar part does do a balancing thing, it does, actually doesn't speak to why it's as high as that. So why, why that high? Why, why do you need the 22 feet for the solar panel? Um, that's designed to, in order to, to, to collect the right, um, you know, the, uh, the sun, the angle, the sun, the angle. The height of the, the actual height was based on the minimum height clearance from the bottom, which was the 14 feet that we set in order to fit the two fire. emergency vehicles. Right. And then the, um, the rays are just slightly tilted to catch the proper uh, angle of the sun. So it improves the efficiency of the solar panels right. on the structure. Yeah. Okay, that's so, Mr. Chairman, it, uh, the maximum height, and thank you, Jennifer, uh, the maximum height under 430-13, um, actually B1, is 15 feet, and the applicant is proposing 22 foot 3 inches, um, and I think they have given you the reasons why. Um, so, uh, under the, do we see... Under the SICA balancing test, do we see any negatives for having uh, the height at that level? No, it's the height that's proper for the for the design. 
and also to one of the direct measurements that any board has uh, negative is whether or not you have a room full of unhappy people you know all of whom were notified within 200 feet and I think everybody has a smile on their face in this room but when you open it to the public you'll find it out uh, also too you you your board has made a conscious decision within the last two months that you want to see more solar panels in or Sydney Troy Hills by approving the car the solar on the adjacent property okay um, I don't see uh, mr. chairman any negatives here um, I think the applicant has spoken to uh, the proper justifications. Um, so I think should you choose to act on this variance, I think you have enough information. That's what I was looking for. Are there any members of the board that have questions of this witness on this testimony at this time? Mr. Cangiano, you have yeah, any? Yeah, I have just a couple follow-up uh, housekeeping items. Um, you did mention that you are below the 5,000 square feet, that's, and you mentioned that you, you ran a calculation. Um, just as a condition of approval, I ask that that gets submitted, uh, that calculation. You also mentioned you would go to revise the plan to put the proper uh, survey references on there. But I also ask, under the lighting plan, you did show the Isolux uh, book candles under the canopy, uh, under the canopies and the arrays. But you're taking down uh, the high mass lighting, uh, site lighting. That's no, that's not correct. We're not taking down the site, high, high mass site lighting. It's going. Looks like it appears it's going. It's oh no, the, the, the mass lighting stays there. Okay, it's can you explain that? It's supplemented by the um, the lights underneath. Any any area that's blocked by the solar arrays will be lit by the LED lights, the canopy lights that are underneath the solar array. Okay. Could you explain how you're not? Uh, interfering with the the light poles it's like the the the, the most southern row of uh, array appears to be right over the uh, the lighting they're um they're between the arrays so the playing it again there. they're between the arrays the lights stay there they're, they're in between. I think on your plan the light poles are shown under the array uh, could you just testify to that? Where, where can you show me where the light poles are? Looks like if they're in the, the, the second row of parking and you know what I'm not going to do. It's in the first full yeah, no, row. No, I see that. And you have a you have a canopy in the, in that same line. Right. Um, well, and the fair? same with the nearest uh, row, like uh, array row sure to the building. Be, it would be my preference to try and keep the lights in between the, the panel arrays. We can clarify that because, yeah, as I said, I'm not quite sure. I'm, what I can tell you is that the lights, whether they stay or they're not there, the lighting it will be lit by the. Uh, well, this is what I'll ask. You can look at that if you're going to take the light. Just it's subject to the board. Um, but I would ask that you have a revised lighting plan. To show what the end result foot candles are and isolates is from the face of the building to uh, to address lighting right. along the sidewalk of the building and again to the to the to the southerly port uh, southerly row of the parking. Okay. All right. So that we you have just to model the existing light poles as well. Well, if you're keeping the existing light poles, okay. yes. And if you're not, then Fair the enough. new lighting will have to cover. And that I can area. agree with that because I wanted to see the light levels in between the aisles, which were missing for some reason. It was trimmed off. When yeah. Did the lighting plan? Yeah, it's trimmed off we'll right under the camera. We'll update the lighting plan to show a final design for the lighting in accordance with the existing. Yeah, well. that, that's my request. <coughs> Thank you. So you agree to work with a township professional to come up with an approvable uh, lighting plan that uh, you and he both agree on? Yes, I so. <coughs> and I've been looking into that already. Um, and then you mentioned in this kind of unusual I have a draft of a resolution and it states number nine uh, that you testified that the site is in good condition yeah. um, I did drive the site and I did note some potholes and in various locations 
and we kind of had the same testimony with the prior application mm -hmm. you mentioned. What is the applicant and or building owner going to do about um, upgrading any upgrades to this parking lot, making sure that these the pavement is a good state of repair? And again, I, I personally am not concerned about it from a uh, well, I'm more concerned about it from a constructability standpoint and uh, the solar arrays going in and you're giving yourself a difficult time to uh, get paving equipment after you put the solar, solar arrays in. So have you given any thought to spot repairs to the parking lot? Well, after the, um, the electrical conduits are installed, obviously they, um, they have to repave the so of the asphalt. So I don't think there was a plan to, uh, to repave the whole parking lot. It would have been just this, you know, this isolated trench repair for the areas that were damaged. I didn't notice any um, pavement areas that needed so, to be repaired, but if there are some, I'm sure the applicant would agree to uh, repairing um, pavement spots that need to be repaired. Yep. That's that's good. That works for from my standpoint. I don't know what the board's right. position is. If you can identify the locations, or uh, we can look again. Well, I well, think maybe we leave it toward post to inspection or post construction. Very well. Uh, so, so what would, what I would suggest is to take your comment. We'll put it in the resolution as well that the applicants agreed to spot repairs to the parking lot to the satisfaction of the township engineer. Yeah. Yes. I that, that works for me. Very good. All right. Uh, Gordon, you have some? Uh... Yeah, just one quick question. I, I guess it's already been pointed out by our planner, and I see that in the resolution number, uh, whatever, one of the one of the ones towards the end, that the zoning table was incorrect. Um, do you know if there's any existing variances for setbacks or impervious yeah, coverage on site? I tried to get on the record before when we brought up the issue about the, the variance for the accessory building structure height. I, I testified that um, that was the only variance or waiver that was required, and the other respects of the project are all conforming. I, I, get, I guess I was getting at pre-existing variances. There's none? No. Okay. Because no, I guess the zoning way. table kind of... Right. So you, you went back us. and... Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman. No, no. Yeah, please. So you went back, you, you checked again, uh, regardless of what the zoning table said, and you're comfortable that Correct. that is the only one variance yes. that's the required. The building is set way far back. We need all the setback requirements. All the bulk requirements for the building are, are, are met, and we're going to update the table on the revised drawing. Thank you. All right. Any other members of the board have any questions? Uh, Jennifer, you look like you have something. Um, I do. I, I, I am just, I am work for the township. I'm not the representative from the town, and I run the construction and zoning department. So. Can I just ask, I'm curious, I've been with the town 30 years, this is the first time we're ever doing a resolution. What was the reason for trying to do the resolution now? Because I was just talking, you still have to meet compliance review. So you're still going to revise the plans and have to resubmit and still uh, Andrew and Stuart are gonna have to look at them and Nora's still gonna have to process and sign. But what was the reason for, for wanting to expedite the resolution? Because we're getting started much later than we wanted to. We want to get the uh, solar up as quickly as we can. And uh, as you know, you immediately lose a month by the by separating the resolution from, from the uh, application. And, and of course, uh, the other reason for trying to expedite it is you never know. I mean, for the moment, the pandemic is, seems to be going away, but you never know, all right? We may be in a war, God forbid, in the next month. You never know. So if you if you're trying to move your project ahead, trying to save that month is a is a good thing. Plus, at the end of the day, it's solar panels. You know, up until this discussion of the accessory height variance, it was a uh, pretty much a buy right application. All right. I mean, it's it was a pretty clean application. So that being said, you you know you, you we called early and said, is it possible that we could help in terms of expediting this by working with the uh, the board attorney? Would you speak to, up, please? To uh, work with the board attorney to uh, try to draft a resolution that hopefully would be good enough for passage the same night, so we could save the the, the month. It's about it's about time. Okay. The fact that you never know. Um, 
as zoning officer, I obviously can't issue the zoning permit until I have the signed site plan and done by the compliance review. Right. But uh, the DCA in the state of New Jersey allows construction departments to start simultaneous plan review. So that is always something that we can discuss with applicants to right. um, you can submit to the construction department, um, which is the thing that's going to take you the time. The zoning permit I've already written. If, if this application is approved, yeah. I've already written my notes. The zoning permits issued in like 24 to 48 hours. It's the construction right. department that takes time. But there's always that option for compliance. You know, review. while while you're seeking compliance review if your application is approved, you can have already submitted to the construction department right. and and agree that if for for some reason that you decide not to do the project, you can still pay for the plan review. But that is that is an option for all applicants. Right. You could submit that if time is of the essence. Well, and time, that's an issue. time is, and what we're hoping to do is, as far as I read this, it looks to me like there's. Uh, there may be two comments that go into the resolution, which new planning and zoning technology we can do in satisfaction, you know, as long as your your board attorney is satisfied. We can give you a nice clean resolution tonight that includes the fact that the a re revised lighting plan will be submitted to the satisfaction of the town engineer and that spot repairs to the parking lot, again, to the satisfaction of the town engineer. And, uh, and those are, and, and, and also, of the calculations of disturbance. Yes. All right. Submission of calculations of disturbance, and then the the, ex, the accessory height. And then the revised uh, zoning schedule is part of the revised yep. uh, plan. And, it, and if you like this, if you like the application, give us ten minutes. And we'll get a, a lovely resolution. All right. All right. Any other members of the board have questions, Mr. Neely? Mr. Chairman, I ask why uh, are we are we going to be setting a precedent yeah. by looking at a resolution immediately after the approval of the application? This could go on at infinitum into the future, could it not? A question for our attorneys. Yes. Yeah. Well, so I, I had sent an email um, prior to when council had originally made this request. The municipal land use law allows a board to do this under certain circumstances. What's traditional is um, the board authorizes the attorney to prepare a resolution that will be voted on at a later time. This in no way sets a precedent because each applicant has to make a request and this board has to grant that request. So if it's how many years have you know been on the board and this never happened before, that kind Actually, of shows you. In my time, I have had it happen before, but it's very. It's rare, very rare. Very rare. So it's really dependent on the circumstances of what the applicant is requesting. It can be done. There's nothing wrong with doing it. It's just a matter of can you gather the factual data that's being presented and put it into a memorializing resolution beforehand. 99% of the time, you can't do it just because there's too much going on. There's too much testimony to be had. In this one, we were able to, um, it's only one witness, engineering testimony. I was able to get a, a synopsis of that testimony ahead of time and put into our form and we're able to do it. I have a couple additional notes. Council basically touched on uh, the conditions that will be added. Um, so on this one, uh, the board found that it was okay uh, based on the circumstances, but in no way do I believe that this sets a precedent for future applications. I propose that what we do tonight is that if we agree with the application, that we would then approve the application then the final uh, resolution would be approved after a 10 minute or 15 minute break. So that there would be a chance for it to be updated and for us to have the changes explained to us by our attorney. Sounds good. Does that seem fair? Yes. Can I, can I ask a question? I apologize, but um, is the resolution going to include the motions, a second, the votes? Because I usually add that information in, you know, after you know, we, it's been approved. I don't see why not. It's, it's just is, is he going to do it? I mean, is there any reason why if he's fixing it up, it can't be sent to me and tomorrow I could add all this extra information? Or is this gentleman going to add it himself? Council, really, if the board approves the form resolution, it just has to be signed by the chairman. 
and the board secretary in terms of you know the final form but absolutely if if the form resolution itself is approved upon I mean so really what you're asking for is that those that last page where it's the way the uh, where I'm adding everyone's vote who voted for it okay the motion who second it who voted yes who voted no who's not here right I mean technically couldn't that be added in those 15 minutes yeah they, they have the ability to type here so Tenora's <coughs> satisfaction Tenora would have to add it oh. up to you I'm just, I'm just asking a question I usually take you know what is signed off on and make copies uh, yeah, for sure. yeah. you know all the township departments do a cover letter and I'm not doing all that tonight uh, but uh, I mean, if you, you want to sign off on it, I mean, I don't, I don't see why we can't, you know, take care of this last little bit, you know, tomorrow, mm -hmm. and I send it to them. There's no. Yeah, reason. couldn't we just couldn't or just add the rest of that tomorrow? I don't see anything wrong with that. Yeah, council. In terms of completing the form, yes. the cover letter and copies, that's that's it's not fine. a problem. But right. we do have the technology to actually add that page, if you'd like, you know, in all your filling in is who made the motion who seconded it, and then the question that i would yes ask no. of our counselor is are you is it being suggested here that instead of where are handing you a completed resolution tonight you get one tomorrow morning we could handle it it's a it's a huge lift we can handle it. <laughs> does that work for you uh, more? I'd, I'd prefer it that way that makes sense so um, again from from the council's perspective <clears throat> the resolution has to embody the facts as established in the record and the reasoning for uh, the approval or, or denial uh, all the other um, formats if you will can come at a later time really at that point that the chairman can sign off on it um, as long as this board is voting on that form establishing the facts and the criteria for which you know makes their makes their decision right that's that's the essence of, of so I'm not sure is the plan to verbally say the additional conditions for the resolution that's before you and then modify it for tomorrow or would you like to modify tonight I would personally like it modified tonight so that we could vote on the resolution yeah. tonight I, I agree Give because 10, some of the testimony in terms of the actual variance being requested that really should be in the form resolution yes and then um, in terms of the format to satisfy Nora can be done uh, tomorrow right okay perfect okay and by the way for the record are there any trees being cut down okay that's one thing like that. <laughs> that was my question <laughs> sorry I didn't mean to steal it from okay are there any other members of the public mr. to yeah I have a question um, so the height of the panels right how do we come how did we come up with 22 feet as I explained before the bottom cord of the arrays was set based on the, um, the, the requirement of the right, but why not 24? Why not 21? How did it come up? Yeah. The angle of this is based on the um, engineering for the, the solar array, so right? So, I thought about that. I, I heard the previous testimony as well. The, what I was thinking, the angle of the sun is not the same for throughout the year, right? So, how do we know this 22 feet would work for the whole year? At the same efficiency. Um, that was designed by the solar array manufacturer. So, you know, if you want, we have the engineer here could answer questions about that important. I mean, I'm not saying it's not that important. I'm just saying that uh, it's based on the design of the solar array to maximize the collection of solar energy. Right, but the sun doesn't stay at the same angle for the whole year. So I'm just curious, right? Maybe it's my curiosity than anything else. Yeah. Oh no, it doesn't adjust. If that's what you mean. It doesn't adjust, right? So then, how would it be efficient for the whole year? As I said, I'm not the solar array engineer, yeah. I'm the site engineer for the for the site plan application. But I would suspect that huh? it's based on the engineering for the solar array. The angle of the sun takes into account the um, the different angle of the sun during the different times of the year. Okay. And maximizes. The so I would think they ran some sort of models or some sort of calculations to figure out the most optimized angle probably than the perfect one. Okay. Thank you. All right. Other members, uh, professionals, hearing and seeing no other questions. Mr. Chairman, I have, I have a question. Oh, yes, um, I, I would have appreciated a picture of the uh, parking lot that, that's there now. I, I understand you say you're going to fix anything, and we appreciate that. Thank you for that. 
uh, but visuals always help. Um, did anyone ask or uh, mention, will there be any EV chargers placed inside of uh, underneath these uh, arrays? No, they're, um, they obtain the power, they don't they send it out, it goes to the, the main distribution panel inside the building. Yeah, I know, I, I, I didn't any, see any EV charging spots no, in the actual lot. There Is there any EV now? Post, no. So we're gonna add a bunch of solar arrays but not a single EV charging spot. Nothing I know. Well, you're redoing the whole you're redoing the whole parking lot anyway, aren't you? Pretty much. Oh, we're not redoing the parking lot. Well, you're doing four. I mean, four sections we're of it. We're installing so. the arrays above the parking lot. Okay, but for the record, there's no EV chargers on this site. Not at this time. And you're not, not installing any. Not as part of this project. Okay. How do you uh, within that? How do you uh, get around the DCA's model ordinance? which applies to towns even if they haven't adopted it on their own. Right. I think the, the difference is that we're not doing the building. Yeah. Well, you've got a preliminary and final major site plan. If you recall, I didn't think the ordinance said they had to. I think it, it addresses should they want to what they have to do. I was under the impression that it was mandatory, and then there were certain elements that the township, a Man township, could waive, and certain or or could modify, and certain they could not. So I think the distinction is that the mandated charging stations are proportional to new parking spaces. In other words, if you do 15 parking spaces, so many of them have to have a charging station. If you do 100. Somebody have to have a charging station. Because there's no new parking space, I think that's why it doesn't apply. It sounds plausible. So I'm assuming that we grant you this, that if there is a further requirement that for, you have charging, charging stations, right. that would then be something that would be brought forward and you right. would go forward with that. If it's not required, then it's not required. Yeah, I think the cutting issue is new spaces. Okay. But you could do a condition of approval of you'd be required to comply with the state uh, statute regarding electric if, if if charging need, stations if necessary. as applicable. Correct. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Exactly. Okay. Are there any members of the I public? Still have more. Oh. I still have a couple more. Oh, no. Okay. okay. <laughs> They're not difficult. <laughs> Uh, I, I think Mr. DPR asked before, but any trees going to be removed from the south side or trimmed? No trees were to be removed. Or okay, so it's high enough that none of those trees have to go away or be removed. Right. And, okay. And will anyone from the uh, Jacksonville Road area be affected in any way? Um, can you explain why? Um, so I, I'm going to assume that you're going to do some construction in the area and lose those parking spots for those days you're doing construction, will there be any, any traffic on the Jacksonville Drive area? There shouldn't be any disruption. I mean, it's, it's a huge parking lot. Okay. I don't see that there would be too much. So when the one section is being worked on, there's still plenty of parking? Sure. Yeah. Okay. All right, thank you. I don't have any more. Okay. Are there any members of the public who have questions on this witness of this testimony at this time? No one's coming forward, hearing and seeing none. Councilor? Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, life is short. And uh, we really have to get our, our solar act together as a country and as a state. We're trying to do it as quickly as we can, but we don't want to do it in, an, in any other way but top quality. And what you said at the last meeting, obviously I was not smart enough to think that you would come up with new stuff. But the number of items that you have asked for, which are very reasonable, uh, we are happy to add to the resolution. And we have to take them back to your township engineer to make sure that he or she is happy, namely that, the, that there will be uh, repairs to the parking lot uh, as uh, to the satisfaction of the town engineer. The uh, charging stations, if needed, uh, by the law. All right. Uh, a reference to the 
uh, height variance for the accessory structure for 22 feet 3 inches versus 15 feet in the ordinance and I don't know if I saw, did I were there I had, some others I had um, we have to mark a one into into the record which is the array layout compatible with the testimony regarding the fire association memorandum the justification for the height variance as you indicated right in addition to creating a section calling out that particular variance in the whereas paragraph right and then the rest are conditions of approval um, revised lighting plan uh, showing uh, lighting along the sidewalk and the south southerly row of the parking um, spot repair of the asphalt at the direction of the town engineer right submission of revised zoning chart and then the EV charging stations um, if, if required if required those are the additional one, two, three, four conditions that I have. In addition to the fact testimony regarding the um, those two items that I just mentioned. We think we can accomplish that rather quick. Okay. And it will help us to get the jump start on the construction. Is that your sum of your case? Well, I don't I don't know how much you want to take at this point, but you know the the overall summary is that. Uh, Parsippany Troy Hills is is being a trend center. You know, you you have already started uh, proving more solar in your community. You're reducing the community's reliance on the grid. That's a great thing to do. Uh, you've had an extensive review by all four of the reviewing bodies, and to their comments, we responded. Some of the new ideas tonight are great ideas, and we're happy to agree to them. So uh, we're hoping that uh, you'll be kind enough to grant us a preliminary final and that uh, that bulk variance, the newly discovered bulk variance. Okay. It's a good, good, good deal for Parsippany Troy Hills. Are there any members of the public that wish to speak in favor or in uh, opposition to this at this time? Hearing and seeing none. All right, we have a two-step issues so this closes the evidentiary portion of the the case it's a two-step process the first thing we're going to do is we're going to have a vote uh, uh, move a, a resolution to approve the application or to disapprove the, the application then our attorney will go off and get the resolution that he has proposed adjusted by the uh, applicants uh, quick keyboardist back there <laughs> and then that will come back to us and we can then approve the resolution or disapprove the resolution as sees as we see fit but nor will have till tomorrow to make adjustments for any of the little uh, bits that go on to, as to who voted for it who voted against it and have these sign ups does that make sense to everybody yes yes Okay. Uh, any discussion on this at this time? Do I hear a motion to approve the application? Mr. Chairman, <coughs> Mr. a Mueller. motion to approve the application number 21 colon 524 Enton Road LLC 9 Enton Road Block 202 Lot Number 9 Preliminary and Final Major Site Plan for construction of solar car ports. Is there any other items that we that we need to put in? Um, no. So we're approving the C variance for the uh, uh, that includes the C variance, I suppose, in your preliminary and major final site plan approval, and the other conditions that we discussed. Uh, is there anything else that I'm missing here? Preliminary major final with associated bulk. Yep. Uh, subject to conditions stated on the record. Right. No, that's all. That's all okay. Right. Do I hear a second? I second, second that. Oh, sorry. You can have an email. I second that each. Nora, would you call the roll, please? Did each? Yes. DiPiero? Yes. Neely? Yes. Matt? Yes. Napolitano? Yes. Neely? Yes. Bonaken? Yes. Dinsmore? Yes. All right. If we can have your attorney for 10 minutes. I'd like to move that we uh, <laughs> recess.
what's, what's the proper term here? I've forgotten. Uh -huh. Recess okay. for 10 minutes while they, uh, uh, our attorney goes and has the uh, final resolution ironed out. This is a uh, reconvening of the meeting of the Township of Precipitating Troy Hills Planning Board, Monday, March 7th. Uh, it's now about 9.10 or so. Nora, would you call the roll, please? Denise? Here. Here. Neely? Here. Matt? Present. Here. Neely? Here. 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 Uh, Councilor, have you come up with a, an acceptable resolution that you could describe for us or uh, yes. Summa summarize? Yes, summarize. Um, so uh, the um, board heard testimony this evening from the applicant, Nine Enton LLC, regarding the solar array. Uh, they presented the testimony of Mr. Stinson, who provided testimony regarding the installation of the solar array, its site layout emergency vehicle access, stormwater management, and the like. There were also several conditions of approval. This board approved the um, application based on the general welfare, uh, providing solar, which is consistent with the town master plan. The board found no substantial detriment to the public good, and that the solar arrays will not affect anything with regard to uh, parking site circulation, stormwater management, or vehicular access. The conditions added um, were the uh, lighting plan that was recommended by the township engineer, the spot repairs to the parking lot, the uh, modification to the zoning table, and the um, EV charging station, if applicable. I, um, we'll work with council to confirm whether or not the EV charging stations are required on site uh, and what that ultimate requirement will be. Uh, the resolution also has a condition that any de minimis field changes can be made by the township engineer. So if there are um, requirements for EV charging stations, then uh, the applicant will work with the township engineer to have those EV charging stations uh, installed at proper locations according to the state statute. Um, the applicant will also provide the construction dumpster not to be uh, within 15 feet of the building that was in line with the uh, township professional um, correspondence as well. Um, that is it in some, Mr. Chairman. Uh, everything else, this board, the statement of the facts as presented this evening is encapsulated within this resolution, and the board's conclusions was essentially that the proposed solar array um, does promote the, uh, the general welfare, and the, um, the height variance is justified because it, it provides um, the adequate angle to the sun to maximize efficiency while maintaining adequate site circulation uh, for emergency vehicles. Are there any questions by members of the board of our attorney? I uh, just had one, I may have, Andrew. you may have said it, but I just missed it. Who's going to review if the state ordinance is applicable? I am. Okay, thank you. And I will issue a correspondence. It, uh, either way, um, I think a council probably best will communicate in a writing that the board will be copied on, board secretary, board chairman, they can see um, if there, what the ultimate conclusion is, and uh, if there is in fact a requirement, then we'll leave that to the town engineer to uh, to do that during the site plan portion. Okay, is that a fair summarization? Yes. Okay, are there any questions at this time? Do I hear a motion approving the resolution? Anybody wish to approve this uh, resolution at this time? I move the motion to approve the resolution. Do I hear a second? Second, Matt. Nora, would you call the roll, please? Didich? Yes. DiPiero? Yes. Neely? Yes. Matt? Yes. Alexano? Yes. Neely? Yes. 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 Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right. Before we leave tonight, I think that uh, I may speak for others, but my opinion is definitely to try to uh, dissuade people from doing it this way again in the future. <laughs> I understand completely. Yeah. All right. Uh, it was worth doing once. I'm not sure I want to do it again this way. All right. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? So moved. So moved.
All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed gets to stay here and make Nora crazy. <laughs> Do that. <laughs> 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 <laughs>